This video is on the Control 101 MATLAB toolbox and looks at lead lag compensated design using frequency response methods. The community then has agreed on an outline structure for a Control 101 course and the MATLAB toolbox has been developed to support this, particularly because MATLAB tools enable easy and effective visualisation while doing the tedious number crunching in the background so students can focus on core concepts and design steps. This video is going to focus on the concept of lead lag compensated design using frequency response or bow plots. It should be noted that CISO tool is actually quite good for this in general but it's somewhat more complicated and doesn't draw attention to the key design decisions <coughs> and criteria. So the purpose of this app is to really emphasize those specifications and control parameters so students can understand the steps more clearly. A bit of background then. So we're going to use things like phase margins and gain crossover frequencies in the design. So it's important that students are familiar with what those mean. Typical design requirements then. We need to look at how designs might be systematic in meeting sensible criteria. So the criteria we're going to use are effectively the phase margin, which is equivalent to overshoot or damping um, criteria. We're going to use the gain crossover frequency, which is equivalent to a rise time or a bandwidth criteria. And we're going to look at low frequency gain, which basically deals with offset to steps and or ramps. Now, previous videos illustrate a simple lead and lag compensator designs. The lag compensator meets the phase margin and offset criteria. The lead compensator meets the bandwidth and phase margin criteria. If we combine the two, we can meet all three criteria, that is bandwidth, phase margin and offset. But to do this, we need both the lead and lag components in our compensator, as seen here. Now you'll notice something important here. The default choices of the poles and zeros are going to be the same as in the previous designs. You don't have to learn something new. <coughs> so once you've set omega, your target bandwidth, you can see the poles and zeros are defined solely by these parameters beta and alpha, which we have to choose. Step one then. We're going to use the lead design first to meet the bandwidth and phase margin requirements. Now, this is identical to the procedure used for a lead only design. So just go back to that previous video and previous app. That's how you do it. That's step one. Step two, the lag component is then introduced to meet the offset criteria. And this is identical in principle to the step used in the lag design. The only thing is the equations have modified slightly because your compensators are a bit more complicated. But you can see, you can define the ramp error offset or the step error offset using very simple formula, which depend on these parameters alpha and beta. Now, as you've already done the lead compensator design, k and beta are already defined. So you only have alpha left to choose in order to meet your offset criteria. The app design then. The purpose of the app is to allow students to practice and familiarize themselves with this simple lead lag design procedure. First choose the gain to meet a specified bandwidth criteria and that's similar to the proportional design but with a bandwidth criteria. And second choose beta to achieve the required phase margin and third, we've missed the bullet point here, you're obviously then going to choose alpha to set your offset criteria. So let's look at the app itself. Let's bring it across. So here it is. So I've got a default <coughs> system up here, currently with no compensator. So if you look at the bottom where it says control law, you'll see it's basically at one, because all of those poles and zeros cancel. Now, I've set my specifications currently, phase margin of 60, bandwidth of 1, offset of 10%. And you can see these green lines basically mark where you have put those criteria. So the offset's down in the step response, okay, the phase margin's in the phase plot, and the bandwidth is in both the gain and the phase plot. Now you remember from earlier that when we do a lead design, we're trying to increase the bandwidth. So at the moment, you can see where the phase margin is. I've got a bandwidth of, <coughs> you know, about one and a half to two, 
just with a simple proportional design. So I can get a higher bandwidth with my lead compensator. So let's try something like three. Okay. <coughs> so you see, if I go to three, this is achievable. The phase margin shift required is not going to be huge. So the first step is to choose a proportional design to get that bandwidth. So let's use this button, overlay several KP. And you can see that dotted green line is marked and it's roughly over that blue. So what gain goes with that blue? It looks like it's something like 2.8. So let's try a gain of about 2.8. So where's that going to be? Around there. OK, I've got 2.9. It's close enough. OK, so you can see now that I have pretty much achieved the crossover frequency I want. If you look at the gain plot, can you see that the gain plot is going through zero decibels at the bandwidth I've requested? So that's step number one. OK, so what's step number two? Now I need to get my phase margin right. At the moment, the phase margin is awful. If you look over here, you see the phase margin is 15 degrees. So I need to increase the phase. So let's see what sort of beta do I need for my lead. So let's overlay several lead. OK, so what you can see, <coughs> different choices that have been called alpha here, OK, will give me different phase margins. And I'm going to be needing something roughly that looks like the green line, doesn't it? Which looks like alpha's about 5. So let's try 5 and see what happens. So here we go. Here's my compensated plot now with just the lead part. And you can see the current phase margin is now about 55. You might say, well, let's try 6. 55 is not quite enough. So I've tried 6. And now the phase margin is 58. So that's not too bad. That's pretty close to the phase margin I've asked for, given I'm only allowing integer values here. Now you'll notice the lead pole and the lead zero have been chosen automatically. I haven't had to do anything. The gain crossover frequency has not been affected. I haven't had to do anything here. So next step. Currently, the lag is doing nothing. The pole and zero at the same place. But look at my offset. If you look at this light blue line, <coughs> you can see I'm settling quite a long way away from where I want to settle. So I now need to increase the gain. So let's try a pole zero ratio of something like four. And you can see we're beginning to get closer to our offset criteria. Maybe that offset criteria is going to end up being too ambitious. Let's go all the way to 10. OK, has that done it? And you can see we can only get so far. So maybe our conclusion is going to be for this particular system, our offset criteria is too ambitious. But you get the idea of what you can do. OK, so we've demonstrated how to run and use the lead lag design um, app in the Control 101 toolbox. And this can be deployed during lectures and student private study to help students appreciate and relate their technical and analytical learning to authentic systems. As ever, when you open the app, the manual will open automatically and that will direct you to MATLAB's source code, which you can use for more precise computations, modifications, if that's what you want. And obviously, once you're confident in the principles, you might find tools like CISO tool are a bit more flexible um, and obviously allow you an arbitrary system and so forth.